All right, let me check real quick just to make sure it says going live. All right, it says we're live. <laughs> Hopefully we were live before. Um, all right, today I will repeat all that and I'll edit it out if it, if it uh, doubles up. But today we're going to make a mallet. We're going to do a two-piece mallet out of maple burl and walnut. Hope everybody's doing well. If this is your first time here, my wife Robin is on the phone with me. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them in the chat and she will pass them along to me. So we'll go ahead and get started. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn the, the head of the mallet first. All right. Is there anybody out there, Robin? Anybody have any questions? I'll go ahead and switch the camera over. All right. Hi, guys. I'm going to switch the camera over and get a better view of what I'm what I'm going to do. All right. So I have a piece of uh, maple here, and I'll give you the measurements here real quick. It is four by about four. Maybe a little a little less. Pretty close. All right. My glasses on, and we will start turning. All right. Go ahead and get this all set up. Get the speed cranked up. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and true it up first, and then I'll put a tenon on the end so that we can grab it in the chuck and, and drill this thing out. And I'm going to start with the roughing gouge just to get it true, and then we'll go from there. And I have the lay speed at about 2,500 RPMs. and I'm going to bring the diameter down. We'll probably end up uh, about three inches is probably a good size, good size mallet. We don't want to make it too big. All right, let's see what we got going there. It's a little over three. I think I'm going to just leave it there for right now, and then we'll, we'll bring it down a little bit more here in a second. I'm going to put a tenon down on this end and grab it in the chuck. Yes. All right. One sec. Let me grab something. And all right. Then we'll grab it in the in the chuck and drill out a hole in it with the Forstner bit. Let me. All right. Hang on, guys. One sec. Oh, somebody, uh, all right, hang on, I got a technical difficulty, there, there we go, I, I couldn't hear Robin on the phone, it was, it was way too quiet, somebody asked, uh, what kind of wood it was, this is maple burl, so, just, uh, got some nice burl in it too, so, we'll get that, 
once we get it all cleaned up and sanded up, you'll be able to see it. See how beautiful it is. All right. Grab the chuck here. And I, Robin, are you still there? I think I lost her again. All right. Okay. Somebody asked about the uh, Easywood tools. I just have two of them. The one that came with the Robust, and I just took the pin out of that one. So I use that one for different things, and then this one I left the pin in. And that way I can just go back and forth without having to loosen up the, the little point in the center of it. All right. Hang on. Give me one second. I have to call Robin and find out what is going on, why we can't, uh, why she keeps cutting out. And hopefully, it will connect again. All right. So, so it seems to be working working fine now. Maybe the it was just a bad call. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill into it with the Forstner bit, and I'm going to use an inch and a quarter, and I'll drill in with that. The drive center was the one that came with the with the lathe. This is just a cone that screws on it, so they they come just like that, but they're threaded, so you can put in different inserts on them or different attachments on it. So this one has a cone, little ring around it, and then even like the larger one like this for doing different things, it's they thread right onto them too, and they thread onto the live center. All right, let's get this sanding pad out of here. All right. Uh, pardon me, I didn't hear that. Uh, what, what got me started in work, working? My grandfather got me started in woodworking as soon as I could walk. He had a shop right up behind his house and he was always out there making stuff. He uh, like remodeled the house a couple times, built his own kitchen cabinets. Um, he was always doing doing something and that, that he's the one that got me into it. All right, we're gonna turn the lay speed down to about, about 200 or so and then I'll go in and then if I have to, I'll put the, uh, put the extension on. And then we'll go ahead and slide it up. And just keep working my way in, in slowly. Just take a you know a few turns, back it off a little bit, and then and clean it out. And we'll just keep keep doing that as we go in. And I always back the back the quill up before I stick it back in. All right, so I'm in there pretty far. I'm gonna have to switch over and run that put the extension on that just slides right in there like that and then that way I can, I'll be able to get right down to the bottom of it all right Robin's being awful quiet Oh, oh, thought the uh, Robin's headphones were cutting out. Apparently, apparently, we need to get get some new headphones. 
Uh, somebody asked what, what type of chuck this is. It's the easy wood chuck. All right. Go on a little bit further. I don't want to want to hit the bottom of it, but I want to get pretty close down into that tenon, so that so that when I turn it around, I will uh, be able to tell tell how far it is in there. So we'll go ahead and come out here, and this is sticking for some reason. Well, we'll just take it out of there and use it like this. So we want to go right about there. So I'm just going to measure it on the, the extension and burl. And we want to go right to the end of it there. Come in right down to there. That should be the bottom. Make sure you back it out every so often because you just keep, it'll pack those shavings in there and lock itself in. To the shoulder there. That should put us right into that tenon inside there. All right. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean up this this end right here, and then we will will uh, turn it around and actually use the chuck to turn the other other half of it. And at this point, it really it doesn't matter which end's the top, which end's the bottom. So you, you can kind of just decide what, what side you like better. Or... I'm going to crank the lay speed back up. And I'm going to clean this up and true it up just a little bit. And... I'm sorry, I didn't, didn't hear that. Somebody had a question? No, I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Let's clean this up. And I think I'm going to make this the bottom, so you want that kind of flat because we're going to put the, the shoulder on it. At least, at least a little bit of it. Make sure it's, it's fairly, fairly flat. And then I'm just going to round over the, the edge right here a little bit. Bringing it down a little bit. The diameter is a little bit smaller here than it is here. That's why I'm taking off some more material. I'm just trying to even it up, make it true across there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand up this this part of it and then we will flip it around and we're going to use the pin jaws to to uh, clean that up. So let me uh, go ahead and hook up the dust collector real quick and we'll sand that. Got 
that all set up. And yeah, no. turn the lay speed back down. Put this on a little foam pad here. for a little minute. I just kind of go back and forth, forward and reverse to get it, get it cleaned up. And I'm going to put oil on this when I'm done. So we'll just get run through a couple of grits here to get it all cleaned up. So the, because when I put the pin jaws in there, you're really not going to be able to reach, reach back there very well. So I'd rather just, just do it right now. Somebody had a question about what kind of dust collection. I have the uh, Rikon. So it's the, the little one that, that you can mount on the wall. So I have it over next to the next to the bandsaw. And it actually goes, the, the bag goes, I ran the hose through the wall, so it goes out back. So I think with the dust collectors that probably a little bit of it leaks out through the bags. I just think it's better if it goes outside. <laughs> All right, that should be good. Then we can sand the rest of it up later after we turn it around. That should be good for that for that end of it. Let me switch the uh, cameras over so you can see a little better. There we go. So, got that all done. We'll take it out of the chuck and flip it around. So, I'm gonna put the pin jaws in and grab it with that. Hopefully it will go in there, right? Now oh, look at that, perfect. I actually didn't think about that, whether it was gonna, gonna go in there. There we go. And I'll bring the tailstock back up to support it a little bit until I get it, get it all uh, trued up. And that way it, it will line it up too when I open up the jaws. All right, go ahead and put it right back in the center hole. Just put a little bit of pressure on it. And then, then we can open up the jaws and really grab a hold of it. There we go. Then we go ahead and just clean this off. So I have just a little bit of a taper to it. It's a little bit smaller here than it is up here. So you want to want to have just a little bit of a taper. Not a whole lot though. And go ahead and crank the speed back up. Just like that. And I'm gonna come around here and round over over this until we get down 
and start cutting into that the hole from, from the portion pit. there see where that that hole is that's that's now loose on there just doing the same thing I did on the bottom just rounding it over a little bit on this one not real critical that, that, that that's perfectly flat because the tenon from the handle is just going to come through there. It doesn't need to seat on a shoulder or anything. All right. Back this up a little bit. Turn the lathe speed back down. sand this then we can turn the dust collector off for a second same thing with this I'm just running it forward and reverse One more grit dry and then we'll switch over and and sand it with some oil. I am gonna glue it together, so I'm gonna stay away from the, the hole right here because that, that's where the glue is gonna go in. It's not real critical, it's actually just opening up the tenon and and gluing that wedging that open, but we don't want to get too much too much oil in there. Now we can put some, put some oil on it. All right, let me find some sandpaper here. And I'm just going to use the Howard's beeswax on it. Shake it up a little bit. Let me turn that dust collector off real quick. All right, let me check and see real quick see if there were any questions I missed all right oh all right transfer uh, Robin okay well they're going too fast I can't keep up 
girl needs an earworm. Well, I had an earworm a minute ago, but it disappeared. Oh, somebody asked about that crapper. Yes, it's coming up uh, uh, the 27th of March. So, a little over, a little over a month. All right. Let's put a little bit on the sandpaper here. Just kind of work it in before we turn the lathe on. And we'll get some more on there. And it really brings out the, the color in the wood. Hey Bruce, how you doing? All right. Yeah, it just gives it a nice rich color to it. All right. So I'll run through a couple of grits this way and then we'll then we'll flip it over and go ahead and and uh, do the the bottom side of it. Let me wipe that off in between grits. That all cleaned up. Shake it up again. It's a little, little thick. All right. There we go. A little better. around the other way all right yeah we'll do one more this is somebody asked if what kind of wood it was this is maple burl yeah it's beautiful beautiful color I'm going to go ahead and flip it around on there. Let me get it get it cleaned off. Then all we're doing is sanding it, so you really just need to loosen it up and slide it right back on and you don't need to bring the tailstock up or anything. Put some pressure on it. And then just run through a couple of grits on this end of it. Uh, somebody asked about the homemade sanding stuff I used to make. That's, uh, I replaced it with this stuff and the doctor's walnut oil. It, uh, I used to try and make my own with mineral oil and paste wax. This stuff's cheaper just to buy it, buy it right out of the can like this. And it does, does the same thing, so it's all good. All right, wipe that off. Move on to the next one. So because I'm going over this with the with the lower grits again, each time I just like work my way up a little bit higher until I 
get to the last one and then I'll, I'll be going all the way across it. Run this one in reverse. All right. Now we can get this off of there and start working on the handle. taper to it runs all the way through and then we'll go ahead and make the, the tendon on the handle and it'll stick out here just a little bit and then we'll have a, the rest of it let's get that and then for that I'm going to use a piece of walnut all right let me get hands cleaned up here I'll switch the lathe camera angle back over here real quick Walnut put on. And I'm just going to do it in between centers to start out with. And then we'll. So we don't need the chuck anymore. Just like that. And now I'm going to start with the roughing gouge again just to get it it all trued up and then we'll then we'll move on so about right there it's it's kind of a big chunk but we'll we'll turn it down and then we're going to I'll use the calipers to figure out exactly exactly where it is as far as diameter goes All right, start down here. I'm going to turn the dust collector back on because the walnut, walnut's pretty dusty. I'll give you a top view too once we start getting it, getting it trued up. And the lay speed is about, about 1500. Bring that up over the with the top view. No, when I move the tool rest down, and I just have my my hand over the the top of it just to keep the shavings from flying everywhere. All right. Bring it right over the top of it there. Same thing, we'll just bring that down. We're gonna, gonna go ahead and make the, the tenon part here and then this part will be the handle. There we 
go. So I'm gonna bring bring this down, but I need to know how uh, how big to make it the tenon because I want to do a little shoulder on it back down in here. So our inside inside diameter is just over three and a half. So. We're going to go, it's a little wonky there, so we're going to come about right here and then make it three and a half. What? What? Hang on a sec, guys. I'm going to call Robin again, see if we can't get it hooked back up. All right. So, we're going to make it, a, yep, I can hear you. Do I, I have the, do I have a trouble getting the live center off? Um, I use, when I don't need it, uh, that's the question. I use um, um, pipe wrenches. I put, have a little pipe wrench and a big pipe wrench and I put them on there. I don't know if you can see what camera are we on. I, I don't know if you can see. I don't see any right now, but I put a pi two pipe wrenches on it and get them off. But yeah, it does it does lock together. So yeah, you gotta gotta really crank them off. All right. So I went about three and a half there, and the reason I did that is because this had a little bit of wonk in it, and we want a little bit of it to stick out the top of the the mallet. So we're going to, oh, I'm, uh, Bruce asked if I was going to add any weights to it. I'm not going to add any weights to it. Um, yeah, there's, there's different ways to do that, but I, I'm not, it, it's pretty, I don't know. I mean, I don't do a lot of carving, but they come in handy every once in a while, but it's good, solid piece of maple burl. But yeah, yeah, you could add some weights to it. Um. I'm just using the calipers here. I'll bring down the diameter there. So. All right, I'm gonna bring that, this piece down to that diameter. And I'm gonna use the square carbide for that. Are you still there, Robin? I wonder what happened to the headphones. They were working fine last time. All right, now that I have it have it down there a little bit, and I'll start using the, the calipers to to see where we're at. There we go. And then once I get it get it down, I'll pull this off of here and actually put it in the top to make sure it fits right. this right here this little shoulder here I'm gonna bring that down down to too but I'm gonna gonna undercut that just a little bit so that it sits on the bottom of the, the mallet nicely and I'll, br I'll bring this down diameter down a little bit too let's see where we're at as far as diameter goes so we're still a little big there and that's 
perfect right there, really close. So it looks like I need to need to bring it down just a little bit more down in here. And then we'll test it. I think I'm gonna gonna pull it off of there and just check it real quick. Uh, somebody asked why carbide instead of gouges. I'm not sure what they mean by traditional tools. Um, they bo they both work fantastic. All they really do is shape in the wood, so it doesn't matter what you're using. Um, not. Like, uh, does he mean like the traditional, like those hook tools? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you just go a little bit more. And I'll just take a little bit off of that. We're getting really close. Um, I could, I mean, I. I could just lay a skew down flat on there like like so and do do the same thing just like that I do it like that and it's gonna do gonna do exactly the same thing as the the rougher did Uh, and the question was, why don't I make the mallet in one piece? I've made several uh, um, one-piece mallets. I just, I really wanted to try and do, there's a couple one-piece ones I have. And I've turned them, they're super easy. I just wanted to do a, do a two-piece one, see. Just uh, kind of play around and do something different. I think I think that's good and a little bit of sanding will uh, will bring it right down. Just just make sure that it's fairly close. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll just sand it a little bit and get it down there. I'm going to turn the lay speed back down. Grab a little pad here. And we'll just slow, slowly keep, keep doing this and checking the... Checking the seat. Uh, it'll come off in there pretty quick, so... Don't want to sand too much of it away. All right. Get really close. I could probably press it on there, but I really want to cut a slit in it and then put a little wedge in there. I think that looked nice, so I want it to, to slide in and out of there. Just a little bit. Uh, 
uh, you can sharpen a skew on a grinder. Yeah, yes, you can. You can sharpen any of your gouges anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I have a sharpening jig and a grinder. Uh, oh, carbide tools for hollowing? Yeah, they're fantastic. They, uh, there's a bunch of, bunch of different kinds. I, uh, I have some, some, uh, ones with little hooks on them. They work fantastic. All right, let's check that. The brand name of the beeswax, it is, it is, hopefully that's right side up. Uh, it's Howard's, Howard's Weed and Feed, and it's Wood Polish Conditioner, is what it is. Uh, should you get full size or mid size? It depends on what kind of uh, hollowing you want to do. I I do have the the full size like pros, but I I don't use them very much. I use the mid size ones all the time. Um, they uh, like that number one hollower. I use that one quite a bit. So this it goes down there, but it didn't stick through quite through enough. So. I do have this this tapered a little bit, so that probably had something to do with it. I'm going to bring down this shoulder just a little bit. Yeah, I have uh, on the hollowing tools. I have uh, I think the number two, number two and number three, and they're just have they're a little have a little bit different hook on them for doing, you know vases and Christmas ornaments and stuff like that yeah I would I would do the do the mid side one but it kind of depends on on what type of type of uh, hollowing you you want to do if you want to do big stuff then they have a, a pro set that's would do for doing bigger things all right I'm gonna take that quarter an inch off just to make sure we can we get that down there and then I will re re undercut that right there and we'll just just go back in there just a little bit like that all right there we go and that sh hopefully that'll be enough there we go I got a little bit of material to work with there I'm gonna cut cut a slice in that too and and so we can lock this thing together but there we go All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the handle part of it. And with the spindle gouge. And so we're gonna, gonna bring this down quite a bit. A little shoulder here. like that and you don't want to make the handle too small just kind of fit comfortably in your hand all 
Uh, what wood am I going to use for the wedge on top? I'm going to use uh, the maple burl. I'm going to put the maple burl in the wall then. In fact, I, when I was cutting the corners off the, the for the top piece, I saved a little chunk right here. So I'm going to put that in into the walnut. So it gives a nice contrast. What kind of wood is best to make a mallet? Um, so a hardwood, a nice hardwood there. Um, um, I have some ironwood. In fact, uh, I think, oh, that one's not iron. I do have an ironwood one, but that is, um, uh, how do you pronounce it? It's I-P-E, it's I-P-E, and it is, I mean, it, it is heavy piece of wood. Um, so something hard and heavy. So ironwood, something like this w would work great. I believe it's, I think it's called Ipe, is how you pronounce it. But, and this is just a one piece mallet and it, it's solid. This, this other little one I use, and this is just, um, this is walnut, I believe. No, it's myrtle wood. This one's myrtle wood. It's actually fairly light. There's not, not much mass to it at all. And it's pretty soft. You can see it's it's gotten beat up quite a bit. Little dings out of it. So it it well you can you hear the difference? Yeah. So a good hard hardwood. Hey Ryan, welcome aboard. Thank you very much, sir. I'm going to just go ahead and bring this down and I'm going to fit it. I'm going to be using it, so I'm going to go ahead and fit it to my hand. see what a little bit small I'm gonna I'm gonna actually bring this the bottom down here just a little bit it's kind of a little bit small bring this bring this down back into here the hair all right there we go Then we'll bring this down. Just like that. Bring all this off of here. down a little bit. Alright. Yeah, just make it, if you're making one for yourself, just make it, it comfortable for you. You don't want it, want it too big, but you don't, also don't want the diameter too small to where your hand wraps way around it. But that feels, feels good. Everybody needs a mallet, so if you're a woodworker, you need a mallet. All right, I'm just going to leave that right there, and then I will. I'm going to go ahead and sand it run through a couple of grits dry and then we'll then we'll uh, 
go ahead and and, and then I'm actually I'm actually just gonna run through it all dry and then I'll get this all glued on before I put the oil on that. How do I like the lathe? Uh, Charles asked, how do I like the lathe? Love the lathe, had it for about five years now and it is, it's fantastic. Um, haven't had any issues or anything with it. It, it works, works great. I didn't think when I got it, like the tilt away system on the, for the tailstock on the back, didn't even realize how handy that was until I actually had it. Super well built. Same thing with this, run it in forward and reverse. What? Oh, thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Hang on. Sorry, guys. It's a little uh, messed up today because the for some reason the phone keeps cutting out and Robin is usually on the phone with me and everything everything runs nice and smooth and and I know what everybody questions are coming in and everything for some reason they it's not working today all right I'm just going to go and switch over and I'll, I'll just do it all, do it by hand now, without the little pads. And I could probably put some oil on this, but I think I'd rather just, just wait till we get, get it all done. Oop, almost lots that in the dust collector. switch over and run it in reverse for the next grit and the light on the robust you don't have to stop it you can just hit reverse and it actually just starts spinning the other direction Then if you want to go go forward, you just hit forward and it starts spinning. get that all blown out after we after we get the, the head blown on then we'll put some oil on it get cut the little nub off down here is there what is there is there a spindle break there there is yes there's a lock on the back side of it there's a spindle lock on it Somebody asked about the spindle lock. It's right behind the, the headstock here for locking it down. That's how, I, when I took the, the chuck off, that's how, how I got it, to, got it to lock. There's not like a break. I, 
I'm not sure what they were talking about, but there's not like a break, you know, like if, like your bandsaw has a has a foot brake on it, if you know to slow the blade down. There's no brake like that. then I'll use the sanding pad to sand up the end there. But we have that. This will slide right on there. That. I'll go ahead and take it over to the bandsaw and cut a slice in it. And then we will go ahead and sand this down and fit it right in there. I'm going to turn the the dust or the microphone off for just a second so bear with me so you don't have to listen to the bandsaw Somebody, somebody had a question about the what kind of sandpaper I use. I use the Abernet. It's a uh, like for Velcro, so it works works great. And you can knock all the the dust out when you're doing that's resin dust. But yeah, it's Abernet. I'll have links down below in the description for for everything once we're all done with the done with the video. All right. Just cut down about about an inch and a half or so down into it. That uh, will lock together like that. And now we're going to take this little piece. I'm going to put up my sanding disc on the lathe, and we're going to sand this down until it slides right inside of there. And then we can put some glue on it and tap it in. Turn the dust collector off for just a second. Robin literally has to keep running back in here and asking me questions. This is old school. We should probably hook up a uh, a styrofoam cup and a cord. All right. Then I have this little, let me switch cameras for you real quick here. I have this little guy right here for sanding. That's just sticky disc. And this goes right on right on the tool rest here. You can raise it up, put it wherever you want. We're gonna turn this over, get rid of all the dust, line it up on center, and then you have a flat surface for no matter what you're sanding. I sand different things on it where it, all the pressure is going down onto that too. All right, well, let's just start start bringing this down a little bit. Let me move the camera here real quick over and give you a better, closer view. But I'll switch it over to that one for a sec so I don't get get sick watching it move around. All right, now we can come back. There we go. All right, I need a drink of water first. make one of the big discs uh yeah yes it's just uh mdf on a uh i glued glued a piece of mdf to a piece of plywood and then screwed the face plate to the plywood so and i they they have discs that i i think i made it i can't remember i think this is 18 inches so they make discs this size too but yeah they it works great i, I sand up stuff on this all the time all right, and here is a little, I don't see my other one, but so this is a piece of 
piece of rubber it's a to clean your sandpaper off i'm going to turn on the dust collector but you hold this up against it and it gets rid of all the dust in it, inside of it i'll do that real quick and then we can sand it it just cleans the sandpaper and i thought i had a bigger one somewhere and i, can't, I don't see it right now i don't know where it went But yeah, it really saves. I, I've had this disc on here for, I don't know, months. And I'm still using it. There we go. All right. Put the piece up there. Press up against it. Go ahead and make it straight. And then I'll start bringing it down to the, to the right size. Works great for doing stuff like this. So the only the only thing is I, I really want to get a taller one so that I can hold it out or a, a larger one so I can hold it out here and sand down you know like the sides of stuff. Because trying to do it, it in here, you're trying to hang on to a little teeny piece like this and it's it's kind of a pain. So and I sand down my fingers quite a bit. But for a wedge too, you want to give a nice taper on it, not not too steep to where it's just a short little wedge. You want it to go go down in in there. All right. Now let's see. We got. Don't have to bring off too much of it, but about a about a quarter of an inch. Is what we need to need to sand off and I'll just slowly keep checking it as I'm going down what was what oh what was the thing I used to clean clean the sanding disc um, I, I don't know. There's the sticker right there. You can, you can get them anywhere. It's it's uh, they're for cleaning sandpaper. It's rubber. It's kind of like a big eraser. Is is what it feels like. When I got it, it was probably eight inch long and two by two square, and you just hold it up there and, and it gets rid of all the dust off. Cleans out all the dust. If you hold it on there long enough, it will. I'll just do it here real quick for you. You could see it literally just gets everything out of it. You can hold it on here and it, it'll look like the sandpaper is brand new. But you just take a few passes across it and it, it really gets out probably 80, 90 percent of it and you can, you can just start sanding again. All right, check that. Getting closer, a little bit, a little bit. Just kind of do that. I don't want to go too far. Right there. Hang on, hang on a sec. Can you rig up like two solo cups and a and a string? Bruce wants to know: Does the wedge have to be precise, or can it be smaller? Does the wedge have to be precise or smaller? Guys, will you tell Robin and chat? She just just needs to come in here and stand here with me. <laughs> uh, it 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 can't be sm uh, Bruce. So I mean, it can be really actually anything. You could stick pretty much anything in there, and it's going to hold. But you want it to hit the hit the sides. And you want it to go down in deep enough to where this right here, the top of it, isn't as big as this opening. Or when you sand it all flush, it's gonna you're gonna see the gaps, just like like a glue joint. You want it, you know, fit, to fit the sides. And here, let me switch cameras back over. So now I can explain it better. You want it to to go down there so it hits on each side. 
not hits on it, but it, it slides down inside of it. And this part right here, the top of the wedge, needs to be a little wider than, than this part so that when it opens it all up and you glue it all together, there's nice, uh, you, really, you won't see the glue joint in there. Um, if this is smaller and it just slides right down in there, it's still going to hold it together, and I'm sure you probably never have any problems. It just won't look as nice if it's if it's not actually if it doesn't fit in there properly. So I'm just taking little bits off of it. You could probably actually just not cut it like that and glue the whole thing in, and you probably wouldn't have any problems it, it being in there like that either. But you want it to look nice, right? So, all right, I'm really, really close. Just take it a little bit off. And then once, once it all sets up, I cut that off with a, with a Uh, Robin says I was completely, oh, completely off camera. Oh, I was. How, how you guys doing? Okay. Take two. Back to Bruce's, <laughs> Bruce's question. So the, the wedge, you want it to come over and, and be as, as wide as the hole, or it's going to be a little bit less, but you don't want to see a gap there. When, when you glue this thing in there, you don't want to see a gap on this side or a gap on that side. And then, am I okay now? I think I'm okay. Um, and then the top of this needs to be wider than that gap there. So that when you pound this, this thing down in there, it doesn't just drop down inside of it. You want it to you want to have a nice glue joint down both sides of this when you glue the whole thing together. If if this is too small, then it's gonna gonna you're gonna see the line. And probably not much, but but you will see it a little bit. So you can kind of see like I have a little bit of a gap around there because this diameter is a little bit smaller smaller than than the end because it's on there pretty tight but there's a little gap there but once I pound this in there it'll push it out a little bit and get over to the edge there but we're we're really close Robin don't don't tell Robin that you guys can actually hear her when she comes in here. Uh, hang on, what? Couldn't you make a T, like a T top a little wider like a flange? A T top a little wider like a flange. Could okay. you could you make a T uh, T top a little wider like uh I don't know what that means. Can you make this wedge into a T top? I guess you could. I mean it wouldn't wouldn't really matter. I mean, like I said, you could probably just put, you'd probably just take this whole thing out and put put glue on here and put it together and it'd probably never come off. But this just looks a little nicer, but uh, I guess you could, it'd be easier to get it all in. Probably look, look really nice too. I don't know what the difference would be. Wedge? Can you use a metal wedge? Absolutely. That's how they Put, have put hammers together for years. They uh, hammers and axes. They take metal wedges and pound them right down into into the tops of them. Um, yeah, you could use a use a metal wedge too. So I think that should be good. I think we're good to go. All right, we're, we're going to tap this thing in now. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on it down in there and we'll pound it together. All right. Let me uh, switch cameras back because that one is way too close for that platform. All right. I'm just going to put a little bit of... No, this isn't yellow mustard. It's actually type bond too. I just put it in here. And somebody told me they that these caps actually fit on the tight bond bottles, so I'm going to try that next time. And I'm just putting a little bit on; it'll get sp spread up it as it as it comes on. Yes, I'm gluing the wedge in right now. So, 
have it on there. It's actually, you can see as you push down on it, it goes up further and further. And just like that. And then I'm going to use my other, other trusty mallet to pound it in. Are we, we good? Just like that. I'll let that set up for about an hour or so. Cut it off with the bandsaw. Just get it closed. And then go ahead and, and finish sanding it. Spread that glue all along the joint there. All right. Let's go ahead and put some oil on the on the. I'll sand the handle and put some oil on it. You can see that why that glue's setting up. All right. All right. Hang on a sec. Hang on one sec. Get this off of here, and we'll uh, go ahead and put the little disc on there. Jacob's truck back in there. All right, now I can flip the camera back over. You can kind of see what's going on. All right. That right there. I think this is it. It doesn't feel like it. I don't know where the, where the actual key went. This isn't the right one. All right, I'm gonna turn the dust collector back on and. Were you going to glue the end of the handle too? Was I w gonna glue the end of the handle? No, I didn't. Didn't glue the end of the handle. Um, and I I didn't put any glue in there, and there's really no need to. That's gonna gonna hold it in there. You're putting glue in here. You're just gonna get it on a little bit on the outside. Um, what I was saying is, you know, if you didn't want to use a wedge, you could just glue that, the, the tendon in there and, and I'm sure it would be fine. This is just kind of a little, it's going to make it look nicer and just kind of spruce it up a little bit, but the chances of it coming off there are really pretty slim. So, but you really don't need to put any down in here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and tur turn. What size is the sandpaper? These are three inch discs. The, uh, oh, the big discs. The plate, I will check it, but I'm pretty sure it is. Robin is getting a workout today, running back and forth. <laughs> it's 10 inch. So it's 10 inch disc, and this is actually 16. It's 16, so I can put a bigger bigger one on there I thought it was 18 but yeah yeah and they're just the sticky sandpaper and they work work great all right we go ahead and turn the dust collector on real quick and we'll sand up that bottom And the, this on here is 120. What? Steven wants to know if you made a video of that sanding disc. Uh, have I made a video making that sanding plate? I don't think so. I will, I will show it to you here in just a second, though. It's, there's really, really not much to it. Let me, let me get this 
this sand it up and then I'll then I'll show you Just kind of slowly rolling around so it's even, and then I'll just and then I'll run through the rest of the grits by hand. All right, we can turn this turn this thing off. I'm going to just run through one more and then I will put some oil on it. The other handle is one piece. What's the advantage of making it two pieces? All right. The other one is one piece and this one is two piece. So what's the advantage? Um, honestly, I don't think there's any advantage uh, other than just you know, it looks a little nicer, spruced up. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big chisel guy. I don't use, you know, a lot of hand tools and stuff. I don't know what the advantage is or if there really is any. Um, I use, use the one piece for doing little chisel work and I have some bigger chisels too. I don't, I don't know if this one's the style or something, if there's something different about it other than it's a lot fancier. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Do I have a favorite store where I get my wood turning supplies? I have a woodcraft that I go to. It's about six miles away. It's, uh, I've been going there for, man, probably 20 plus years now. Yeah, it used to be right on my way home from work. And yeah, it's just right up the road. All right. Let me, uh, here, I'll show you this. Yeah, you, it's, it's really pretty simple. There's, I, I don't think I did a video on it cause it was so, you know, I just, just took a compass, marked out the circle, cut it out with, I believe I cut it out with the bandsaw and then I just glued a piece of plywood right to it. Are we on camera there? There we go. Glued this chunk of plywood on it. I had, had the center point. I drilled the hole down through it so I could line it, line it back up. And then I just screwed the face plate to it. And I just, the face plate's been on it on here for years. I just leave it, leave it on there just like that. The, um, th make sure it's, it's good quality, the MDF though, because you want it, it nice and smooth and flat. Um, don't get just like, you know, press board or something like that, or, or even plywood. You want, want the good quality piece of this. I think like at Home Depot, you can buy like little chunks of this too, like 24 by 24. But yeah, and then this just, just sticks right on it. Um, I, I didn't, honestly, I don't know how I actually got it centered. Um, oh, that's what I did. You can still see it. So I put this on the lathe. I just measured out whatever it was that it, it was 10 inches. I made a circle with a pencil line and then just stuck it to it. So to get it as close as I could. And then I think this is 120 and you can see it still has a lot of life left to it. Those little rubber erasers, they work fantastic. And you can get those at any of the woodworking stores have, have these two. All right, let's let's put some oil on the on the handle here. Switch and and this. 
So I really, I really like the the satin finish, this oil, or the walnut oil. They work work great and really bring out the color of the wood. Uh, the stand, yes. Hang on one sec. Let me let me sand this up, and I will show the the little stand that goes in the banjo. So that thing is is a little more difficult. Um, unless somebody out there in the chat can can help us out and tell us where where to get this one piece, because I don't know if Chefware Kits is still selling them, but they, but they may. So, hang on one sec. There we go. Yeah, and that's only that's 180 right there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going, and I'll just keep working my way through it and sand the rest of it all of all of it up to 600, and it'll put a nice nice shine on it. All right, I gotta wait for that to dry. Let me grab that thing and I'll show you that real quick. Get rid of this stuff. So if anybody out there in the chat, um, um, the, the website is called Chefware Kits. If anybody could look that up real quick and let us know whether they're still selling these because I got it quite a few years ago. So it's actually, it's a threaded tool post. So it, the faceplate and everything came with it and this collar here. So again, this is just a piece of MDF. You can make it any shape you want. I use this for basket illusion, but this is, you need to have it, it needs to be perfect for your tool route tool post or for your banjo right so that goes just slides right in there and it has this little collar so that you when you get the height you want you can lock down that that little collar has an allen screw there and that way you don't have to move it if you want to do like basket illusion stuff you want it on center all the time you can lock that collar in place and it will always be in the same spot but this is a it's a tool post and I, I don't know where else you would get a, a threaded tool post that would go into a a faceplate like that. And that's what you need. Um, so if anybody could help everybody out in the chat and find a threaded tool post. Cause they, and then it should, if they can find them, it should go into just about any, you can get them, should be able to get them. But it needs to be your diameter and tool, your tool post. It's got to be the same, so, so make sure that, that that's right. And then, then like I said, that again, this is MDF, and uh, Chef Work Kits is still selling. Chef Kits is still selling. Cool, cool. Well, then that's that's probably the easiest place to get them, because I, I haven't seen them any place else where they where they have them. So go go. What kind of wood would be used for a baseball bat? Uh, ash or maple, I think is what they used. I've made a baseball bat out of both ash and maple, and I would much rather go with maple. Not a big fan of ash, um, uh, or as far as turning it. Um, it just, I don't know, it's not, doesn't seem like a nice wood to turn. Um, it turned one years ago, and it was it was just wasn't good. And then I turned a maple one here, not too long ago, and it was actually actually pretty nice. Let me switch cameras back over here. Can have a little little uh, little lathe side chat. All right. <laughs> oh well, that that was a giant mess. I. I feel very weird just standing there turning by myself without having somebody talk to me. Where, Robin? They they can hear you ask the question. And they they heard you cussing and swearing earlier too. Yeah. 
<laughs> Just kidding. Uh, uh, yes, Robin, my inspiration. We should bring her in here. Where you at? Um, we we just we kind of are constantly searching for you know different pro kinds of projects and stuff to do. So just about everywhere, we're always bouncing ideas off of each other to try and come up with something new. She's been doing some really cool coasters, and we've been having a lot of fun with that. She's been their resin. I've been cutting them out on the CNC machine, and then she's pouring all of it. It's really cool. But yeah, have a lot of fun. I don't have the camera set up over there, so I can't go over there and read the comments and and uh, then you'd just be looking at my back the whole time. Um, all right, guys, I think I'm gonna wrap it up because we're we're uh, I, I'm just running blind here. Um, I will get this this. Uh, in fact, I'll change the thumbnail here in a couple of hours. As soon as this dries up, I will, will cut it off and sand it. I'll sit and just sand it right on this, this pad right here and then run through the grits and get and bring it all up to 600. But if you want to do it like, you know, um, as far as practical, I don't know what ones, what ones, you know, better. Those are much easier. You can turn them out like that in probably 10, 15 minutes. Um, it's basically just kind of, kind of bringing down, you know, a piece of wood in, be in between centers. It doesn't take very long at all. Um, as far as which one works better, I have no idea. And this one just looks nicer. Once I get it all sanded and that cleaned up, I'll put the picture up and you'll be able to, to tell. But as far as practical, I that'll work just fine it'll it'll pound, pound your chisel and uh do we do this for a living yes we do we have for i think it's been about five years now um yeah robin and i both work for freightliner trucks here at the plant in portland oregon for for i was 20 years and she was 21 years and and we i think it's been five years we've been doing doing this full time now so having a blast all right, I will get some pictures of this up. If anybody have any other questions, Robin can run in here and ask me before we go. <laughs> I just I just want to see her run back and forth. All right. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> now she's not going to come in here. Oh. Hang on, I'm going to try and call her one more time. I'm calling her. Hey, this time, do you, can you answer the phone? Why won't it actually call her? Now I'm beginning to think maybe it's my phone. It won't even call. Oh, there it goes. Weird. It's We're having a solar flare, flare or something. Hey, how you doing? What you what you been up to? Okay. After retirement, yes. Uh, if I ever retire, this will be my after retirement job too. I love love turning, just having a ball. I don't plan on quitting anytime soon. So. Why is Robin so nice to me? I have, I have no idea. It's weird, right? It's like I got her trapped in the spider web. <laughs> why, why do they always think I'm the mean one? Yeah. Not cool. And oh, everybody wants me to make a teapot. Haven't I made a teapot? I'm. I'm sure there was something that we could call a teapot. I'm not making a teapot. It would remind me of the British. And Robin loves loves that show, the Bridgertons. Bridgertons? No. No teapot. Um, we could do teapot, but it's... I don't know. It's a lot. What's for dinner? We're having taco salad again. So... Robin didn't take anything out of the freezer for dinner, so we had taco, taco salad last night, so we're having taco salad again. Yeah. 
you, uh, Jerry said brother and sister-in-law worked at corporate. Sister and brother, that's awesome, man. We were right across the street. We were, we were slumming it over at the plants, over at the plant. Robin and I were both painters. She was like foreman down at one end, and I was a foreman down at the other end. And but we were both in the paint department. Yeah, well, that's cool. My aunt, my aunt still works at cor the corporate office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uncle worked down there for thirty-five, forty years. Um, who else do we know everybody down there? Yeah. Yeah. Small world. That's cool. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, now that we're quitting, everything's working. Do I eat taco salad from a wooden bowl? No. Um, I've I've never actually made a bowl that I've like used like to eat out of. I don't think I've ever actually used a bowl I've made and put salad in it and eaten salad out of it. I made a lot of bowls, but I've never actually like took it in the kitchen and used it. Isn't that kind of odd? That's very odd. I need to make a salad bowl. Very odd. I've never actually thought about that either weird oh thank you very much Richard yeah William oh William thank you very much sir been having a blast yeah we were that was a long time ago with that squeaky little lathe squeaky little delta lathe I had <laughs> uh hey Hey, Texas, how how are you doing? <laughs> Dennis from Texas. Are you guys, how are you guys holding up down there? You got, got beat up more than us. We, uh, we do lives just, um, I don't know, probably I'm going to say about once a month. We, we've been doing the craft festival every other month. And then on the off months we do, you know, probably maybe one, um, I do classes, I've been trying to do those every other week. Those are live, but they're on, on uh, Zoom. But yeah, yeah. Um, Robin painted, yes, bef that was a, one of the last things she did before she quit. Um, she painted, painted, uh, what? She painted Optimus. I know what you did. You're, she's talking to me. Now she won't be quiet. It was like. Um, she painted Optimus Prime for the Transformer movie. She's got pictures up on somewhere, Facebook or Instagram with her, with her beside the truck. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was one of the last things that rolled through the plant before she left. Yeah, I was uh, already gone. Uh, I, uh, we always go live when life gets us. Sorry about that. I Ross, sorry, man. It was, things happen. Now we're just wrapping it up. Actually, everything, when everything started working, now we're wrapping it up. We've been, ha thank you, sir. Thank you. We're, yeah, we're planning on another one for, uh, is it next weekend or the weekend after? I can't remember, but I'll start, I'll start posting it. Yeah, we're going to do another class, and and uh, uh, I don't think we, uh, I can't remember whether we pinned it down or not. You guys have any suggestions for a class idea? I know somebody wanted to see some basic wood turning stuff. Um, that was one of the ones we were going to do. Does anybody have any suggestions for a class? We did, we've done... Uh, what have we done? We've done lidded boxes. We did bowls last time. I did the crypt text, um, the puzzle box. I can't think of, I think that's all the actual, actual classes we've done. But if anybody has any ideas, um, or something you would like to learn more about, let me know and I will absolutely do a, do a class on it. Um, 
Yeah, I think I think there was the basic one. Uh, I had a couple requests for that. So, and Jamie, we just did a lidded box one. We uh, apparently deep hollow form. That's a good idea. Yeah, we could do a, a hollow form class. Yes. That was one of the things some when somebody was asking about um, uh, the basic wood turning one, they wanted that was one of the things they wanted to see was sanding and finishing. So, yes, if I, when I do the basic one, it'll be sanding, finishing, sharpening your tools, um, uh, all of it. We'll go over go over everything. Just uh, just basic stuff you need to and and uh, all of that. Yeah, yeah. So basic wood turning and hollow forms. That's a good one. I will. Yes, yes. You know what? I haven't done a baby rattle in forever. I when I first started turning, I made baby rattles all the time, and segment ah uh, segmentable. I'm not. Uh, um, <coughs> I'm not a big segmenter. I've only done a little bit of it, so I am not the guy you want to you want to learn <laughs> how to segment from. Um, I do have some jigs that make it really easy, but I'm I'm not the guy that's gonna. I, I will steer you in the wrong <laughs> direction from segmenting. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know enough about it to to even even really really get into it. All right. I now I'm covered in walnut dust and beeswax. The skew. Oh, class on the skew. Yeah, yeah. We can do that. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, it might be more adding it to the, to the, just kind of the basic wood turning class though, because, you know, doing a whole class on, on, you know, different cuts on the skew and different things for it. I don't know. That w probably wouldn't take very long. Um, and there's a guy up in Portland. Um, and now I'm not going to be able to remember his name, um, but he is fantastic with the skew. Um, I think it's like one of the only tools he uses. I, went to, I can't remember his name. Uh, why not? But he's, he's good. Um, he's a school teacher up there. Um, and I can't remember his name. Yeah, Robin can't remember it either. Yeah, segmented's more... I, I really like it. I segmenting. I see stuff all the time, and it's just amazing and beautiful. But it's um, to be honest with you, it's like scroll sign. It's like you know putting in you know a hundred hours to something. It's kind of uh, no, not Alan Lacer, um, uh, but Alan is fantastic Turner, and yes, he's he's really good too. Um, man, and I can't remember his name. Um, he's a young guy. He's probably in his 40s. Um, he lives in Washington. Ah, oh, I can't remember. But anyway, he, uh, um, he, he, yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's really good. Um, how about an urn? We could do an urn class. Yeah. Yeah, well, in fact, Robin said she to let you know she's writing this all down. We could actually do a deep hollow class and make an urn. Um, and that way we combine them both together. And you can, you know, just the hollowing part and, and making the bottom piece of it, you can, uh, you know, apply that to any hollow form that, that you make, but we could actually do a lid lid for it too. In fact, I'm, I'm doing a demo um, in April for a club up in uh, Washington and that's what, and I don't know if you saw the, the urn I made where it kind of floated over the, the stand and had like this horn thing going, this arm going through the, through the body of it. Um, it's probably a few years ago. There's a video up on YouTube, but it has, uh, I kind of made like an antler looking piece that goes through it. So I'm actually doing that. I'm doing a smaller version of that for the club, uh, demo in, in April, but yeah, we could definitely incorporate the urn urn into the to the hollowing class yeah 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 we could talk about 
steady rests and and uh you know yeah a bunch of different stuff yeah cool and i uh when i when i do just like all the rest of the classes i'll mention it on the video and i'll have it on facebook and instagram and everything so i'll start spreading it around so if you're interested there'll be a link there to to sign up for it and the nice thing about those is they're done on zoom so you're actually on zoom with me it's live we just talk back and forth if you have any questions we just address them right there and and just dis discuss them yes we're robin just made a good point we just eliminate the middle girl so she won't she won't be in my ear <laughs> Uh, basic resin mixing. That's good. Yeah. Um, uh, I, you know what, um, as far as, I don't know if anybody's done like a basic resin mixing stuff, but Jake Thompson, um, from Northside Custom Crafts, he has a ton of videos up on his channel. I don't know if they're like basic, but he does a ton of resin stuff and goes over and does like product reviews. He does like, you know, matchups to tell you which one's better. So he's done a ton of that. Um, Stone Coat Countertops, they they have, you know, hundreds of videos up and it's about resin, but I don't know if anybody's actually done just like bare bones basic, but both those guys and Zach Higgins, um, he does stuff all the time. He he goes live, I believe it's still every Wednesday. So he's a huge resin guy, um, does live lives once a week. Um, he would probably be a really good one. He, Because he's doing the lives, you could actually ask him questions right there too. Uh, the classes are 10 bucks, 10 bucks a person. So they're affordable. And most of them are um, a couple hours long. Some of them go a little bit longer depending on what we're getting into. But most of them are right around two, two and a half hours. And like I said, they're they're done through Zoom. So it's it's at any point, if you have a question, you just we just stop and address it or, you know, in fact, um, Ross was in the, on there, too. And so he can he could let you know too it's like it's it's just nice and smooth <laughs> classes are fun thank you buddy yeah it's uh it's just like conversation though there'll, there'll be other people on there but it's no big deal you ask ask any question you want we can stop and go over every one of them jamie said that jake is going to start doing live soon um so that Oh, that Jamie and Jake are going to be doing lives. I don't know if that's a good idea. Maybe just Jake. I'm just kidding with you because you're, cause you're British. All right. Um, all right. On that note, I need a shower now. Walnut is so, so dusty. All right. Um, if nobody has any other questions, I will... Uh, let you get back to your weekend and uh i will i'll as soon as that dries up i'll get finish sanding it get some shots of it i'll actually change the thumbnail on video but i'll post it on instagram as well um and i think that is about it all right we good okay all right all right guys you have a good rest of your weekend and we will we'll be back with another video on friday all right guys have a good one bye i didn't stop it somebody said hey i was just about to hit the button and robin came on you wanted to see the mallet there it is i'm back on I, it's going to take a couple seconds for it to catch up. So it's maple burl and this is walnut. And then that's the, out of the same piece of wood. So once I get this all sanded up and get some oil on it, it'll match, match this as well. But yeah. Yeah, we'll get it sanded up and get a, it'll get a little bit of a shine on it. Not, not a whole lot, but it'll, it'll, will actually 
brighten up a little bit once we get it all sanded. So there it is. And I'll post it. I'll post it. I'm going to look for a tape measure. It is. What did we end up with? We ended up with, it's uh, about nine and a half by three. Nine and a half by three. Feels, feels good in the hand. Right? All, all good. All right. All right. Bye again. All right. You guys, got, have a good weekend. Bye.